So in estate planning, we deal a lot with what happens to your stuff when you die, right? Your assets, your house, your retirement accounts, all of that. But what about what happens to your body when you die? We should deal with that too. It might make us a little bit queasy. So I give you that caution as we start this, but this video is going to talk about a lot of the options out there for disposition of remains of your body. And I do want to ask you, if you have a loved one, a family member or friend who's thinking about these things, or they should be thinking about these things, you might want to share this video with them. There's that little arrow button that you can share and send this video to the, that family member or friend as they're considering these things. So especially in the US, and I think in other countries too, in some other countries, we really don't like talking about death but we need to because we know that that's really the one thing that's guaranteed. We have that saying, right? The only thing that's guaranteed is death and taxes. Well, we know that some people don't pay their taxes, but we all are going to die. So, but we can choose what we want to happen with our body, all right? And usually we specify this in our advanced healthcare directive. And I have a video on advanced healthcare directives that I encourage you to watch after you've watched this video. Okay, so let's look at First of all, the most popular ways that people choose to dispose of their body. And, and the one that I think is most common and well known is burial, right? So, you know, you're put into a casket that's solid wood, there's some metal that's reinforcing it. Typically, you're in formaldehyde, so your body doesn't break down as much. They bury you six feet under. Is, is that still happening? You know, they bury you deep in the ground, it's layered off. You know, usually you have a headstone so people know where to come visit and pay respects to you. You have a specific place in the cemetery that, that you're being buried, right? So pretty standard. I know for some religions, burial is really mandated, right? So I believe in most in the, in the Jewish religion, also in Islam, and some forms of Christianity also mandate burial. So with burial, I think this is the one that you really have to prepare beforehand. You know, you need to choose a grave site. You need to pay beforehand, all right? Making your family pay for this is, is really awful. I actually have one client whose family member died and she wanted to be buried in a mausoleum, which is really expensive, but she didn't leave any money for it. I mean, how's that going to happen? So you do need to pay beforehand, find the site. You can also write up separate writing, separate from your advanced healthcare directive, saying what you want to happen uh, with that burial instructions, okay? Who do you want to be there? What kind of music do you want? Some sort of memorial service. You can be as descriptive as you want. Now, keep in mind, you know, a lot of people think that burial is not very environmentally friendly. You have that formaldehyde, you have all that metal. It takes up a lot of space. We're running out of space too, right? Cemeteries do take up quite a bit of space. So people have been looking for other alternatives. And also, of course, it's expensive. I think it's one of the more expensive uh, ways that we're gonna be talking about today. So people are looking for other alternatives and options. So the main option, the main alternative that we know of is cremation. And I recently learned that starting in 2015, more people are now being cremated than buried in the United States. Isn't that interesting, huh? So let's talk about cremation for a second. So first, how does it work? Well, the body, after you're, after you're gone, the body is placed in a cremation chamber, which is heated to a very high temperature. It's like 1800 to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. So at that temperature, that causes your body's soft tissues to vaporize. And all that's left are bone fragments. Then they take those bone fragments and basically pulverize them. They, they make them into powder. And those cremated remains, we call that cremains, right? It's a cutesy little two words put into one. Then those cremains are collected and put into an urn or a box. And then they're, they're given to the next in line. So once you're cremated, what should you do with those ashes? Well, sometimes people keep them in an urn, a beautiful urn on display or in a box in their closet, or some people will scatter the remains. I know with, with my grandpa, he loved, um, in his backyard, he had a lot of uh, orange trees, and we scattered his remains around one of his, the orange trees. And, and I loved that. I loved really honoring him in that way. So you can make it as special and, and thoughtful, memorable as you want. Hey everyone, if you liked my mom's video, like and subscribe. 
Hey, some people try to be a little bit more creative with this, right? And there's actually some companies that will take some of your cremains and send them out into space. You know, maybe they'll send them and it becomes a meteor heading back into space, or maybe it just stays out there in space. So, so you can choose to do more creative things. Sometimes, you know, they, but, but it gets more expensive, by the way. You know, if you say, hey, I want my ashes to be scattered, you know, at sea in Hawaii, well, first you have to figure out how am I going to get my ashes out to Hawaii, right? So that's, that can be challenging and expensive. So, you know, really think these things through. Also, it could be illegal. I'm not telling you that you can legally do this, but sometimes people do this. I heard of one person who loves Nordstrom so much that she directed that at the corner of the Nordstrom building, you know, they put just little bits of, of ashes of, of her remains at those corners. I like Nordstrom too, but maybe not that much. Okay, so another popular option now is something called green burial. And this is really the concept of, of going back to earth, going back to the pioneer days. Basically you're put in a burlap sack or maybe a soft box or a basket and you're buried underground, right? Maybe three, four feet under, but there's no formaldehyde, there's no metal. So it's a lot more environmentally conscious. And also you don't have, you know, the noxious fumes from burning a, a person. So green burial uh, can be quite popular now and it's associated with open space. Now it's legal in California and there's quite a few places. There's a few in the Bay Area, others around the, around the state of California where you can uh, go through green burial. So you can be buried at land, but you can also be buried at sea. In this situation, your body can be wrapped in a sailcloth and, and you can have basically stones and rocks weighing you down. And then they go out into federal waters at least six miles from shore and it has to be at least 600 feet deep and then basically they bury you in the sea. That's another option. All right, one of the newer options is something called body composting, all right? So Governor Newsom in September of 2022 passed AB 351, it's an assembly bill, which allows for body composting here in California. So what does that look like? Well, it's basically a 45 day process where your body is turned into soil and then once it's in a soil form. It can be, you know, given to your loved ones if they like gardening, or it can be sent to a forest or other open space just to help nourish. There's, there's a lot of nutrients in there. It's organic material to help, you know, nourish and, and help build the future. Right, one that, that kind of makes me squeam, the name is, uh, well, a lot of these do, honestly. There's a reason why I went into law and not medicine, but we still need to get this information out. Okay, so there's something called liquefaction. This is also called alkaline hydrolysis or water cremation. And basically it's a form of flameless cremation where your body is basically turned into liquid waste. So the body is submerged in a solution of water and lye. Everything but the bones are dissolved into a liquid that's safe enough to, to go into, into the drain. And the remaining bone fragments can be crushed into ash. Right now, what if you really love scuba diving and reefs? Well, there's, there's something called eternal reef where your cremains can be put into an environmentally safe cremation uh, container that can be put in places where reefs can develop. So basically your body is helping to rebuild the reefs that have been destroyed over the years. There are some locations in the US, they're off Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas, Virginia. Also, they can accept the cremains of your pets if you want your pets to be involved in this too. Finally, I wanna mention cryogenic freezing. All right, so this is kind of the more sci-fi thing. If you remember in The Empire Strikes Back, Harrison Ford and Jabba the Hutt had frozen him and then, you know, somehow he was brought back to life. I mean, it sounds great and some billionaires wanna do this, but really we don't have the technology for that yet. So cryogenic freezing, I, I give that a no for now, but it is very creative and maybe someday we'll, we'll be able to do that. Phew, well that was gruesome, wasn't it? All right, but hopefully it gave you some ideas and thoughts about what you might want done with your body when you're gone, because we all will die. And I hope that this also starts a good conversation between you and your loved ones, because we want everybody to be on the same page, no fighting when you're gone, so that your body can be disposed of in a way 
that everybody approves of. It's a beautiful ceremony, and then it starts the next generation on the right foot. Thank you. Hello, everyone. If you liked my mom's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all next time.